Okay folks, and welcome back to another episode of 35th Scale Figures in Review. This time I'm going to try to go through a painting uh, flesh tones of the face review with everybody using what I do uh, to paint the face and the flesh tones in 35th Scale Figures. Okay, what you see in front of you are the essential tools that you really need to have, okay? This obviously is going to be a wet palette, all right? And if you're ever going to get into acrylics or for that matter oils or for anything, okay, you need to find a, or make your own wet palette, okay, because this will allow you to work your acrylics um, in, a, in a very easy fashion. It'll, they'll keep for, for days when you cover the wet palette back up. It's very easily mixable. It keeps the paints workable for a very long length of time, okay. There's various ways you can make them. Uh, one of my other previous episodes I showed you how to make a wet palette from scratch as well as purchasing one uh, from one of your local stores okay uh, the paint brushes I'm choosing to use this time these are what they call their Zem paint brushes all right these are brand new I got these from Sabot um, miniatures from Brett Brett Avance okay and I have a one a zero and a triple zero for painting of the flesh tones okay uh, this is dealing with the face all right uh, the other thing you need to make sure that you have is a cup of water okay distilled water of course is what I have back here because that way you understand that the impurities are going to be taken out of anything that you have all right I have an eyedropper that has my distilled water in it that I'm going to be using here very soon okay um, a variety of different brushes that I've collected over the years um, and these are all very good Windsor Newton series 7 are excellent brushes to use but like I say I'm going to give these Zem uh, brushes a try okay uh, the figures I'm for this uh, purpose I'm going to use uh, Alpine uh, US World War II soldiers heads okay and I'll go through and show you those here in just a second but now what I've been using lately in my 35th scale figures uh, to paint flesh tones is uh, Mr. Paint Acrylics, all right, and uh, a friend of mine in uh, on Facebook, Jaroslav, um, he swears by these, and I have a step-by-step -step process I use that I've gotten from him. I'll put the link to it on the on the the video. But here's what we have. This is your basic flesh tone. Okay, that's my first drop. Okay, and I'm going to go right down the line as you see. Okay, this is brown shadow. Okay, this is light skin. This the next drop is going to be pale skin. Okay, this is your pink flesh tone. All right, this is what you call golden shadow. Okay. This is red shadow, and I'll show you where we use red shadow for, okay? And then to add tint to any flesh tone, we have a little bit of yellow okra right here. Now, when I paint my eyes of my 35th scale figures, I, you never paint the eyes pure white, okay? That never happens. What I found works for me is Vallejo Deck Tan, okay? Has worked very well for me over the years, all right? And then for the pupil, and the iris in 35th scale you really have a hard time seeing any colors so basically I'll stick with my black and I'll show you how I paint the dot uh, later on in this video okay in preparation for my figure painting especially flesh tones I will always paint them Tamaya flat black okay this serves as a primer okay it's a good base to have your acrylics stick to okay and it always seems to work out very well now Oftentimes what I will do is I will spray paint basic flesh tone, okay, which is your first drop right there, and I'll spray them, okay, right in here, and it creates a nice even contrast, okay, a nice even uh, beginning base uh, for you to start your shadows and your thinning with your acrylics, okay, that's what it looks like there, okay, and then this one right here, okay, I'm going to demo here in just a second. What you want to be able to do, okay, to start and use a brush, okay, to fill in and using basic flesh tone right there, okay. So with that, we're going to get right back into the next segment of the video, which is actually putting the paint to the brush to the figure. 
Another thing I use, a lot of times I'll at least have one hand covered up in a latex glove, okay? Today I'm using two, okay? But the latex glove allows me to go ahead and work with the figure and it, the oils from my skin won't mess with the flesh tones or any paints that I put on the figure, regardless whether it's the primer, whether it's the flesh tone, whether it's the camo, okay? I usually at least keep one hand here and then this is my little invented tool of the trade. Okay, this is a dowel that I've epoxied a, a bottle top to. And what I do when I work my figures, okay, so I can get a close up look at them, I just take them, I can interchange them back and forth, in and out. And so that way I have a good workable uh, area, a good hands on to keep my hand away from it, and it gives me something to hang on to. Okay, so. Those are the essential tools we have. Uh, well, we're going to come right back here with the next segment of the video. We'll get started and get painting, okay? Okay, now with this figure right here, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and brush apply, okay, the base coat to him so you guys see what it looks like when he gets the base coat put on him, okay? And make sure you have good even coverage and no bubbles. That's the big piece of this, is to make sure that when you're doing this, you don't leave any pooling of the tones. It's okay if you get all over the place um, and have buildups other places, all right? But the big piece is that when you're covering or getting coverage, okay, you make sure that you don't have uh, bits and parts exposed with too much flesh tone. Okay. Try to make it as smooth as you can. Once again, try to remove any of the pooling that might be there. Try to make sure I get my folk, my Everything needs to be adjusted accordingly. Okay, I'll come back here, a little bit more back in my brush. best to apply these in thin coats the thinner the better so that way it won't clog up too much but make sure you have everything as evenly covered as you can okay behind over here back on the back part okay. okay and as you see from this spot right here for the most part it's covered up pretty good but this is the big part is you got to make sure that the working surface is smooth and ready for the different paint that you're going to apply. And as with all acrylics, you need to make real sure, okay, that it is as, uh, as thin as you can probably get it, okay? And I'm looking right here to see if there's any pooling any place. But now, once again, this is the basic flesh tone. This is the base that you need to have for him. Okay? So that really doesn't look too bad. All right? We're going to move on to the next step, which is providing 
the first set of shadows that you're going to see on this figure. Okay. Okay. Now, after we've got the basic tone set for our figure, okay, with his with his basic flesh, okay, now we start taking mixes. Now we'll mix the basic flesh tone with the brown shadow, and it'll create a little bit of a darker element right there. Now, for this, I've switched to a number two, okay, excuse me, zero Zem brush. All right, that'll allow me to put creases or shadows underneath the chin, along the neckline, underneath the eyes, inside the recesses of his of the eye okay underneath the lip the little indentation of the chin and the ears okay and this is the first part of the shadowing process and the paints need to be super thin so i've mixed this here very well okay made it super uh as, as thin as i kind of want it to be okay you can always add water to it to make it but the thinner you start the better it is okay and whenever you do this you need to make sure you have a a a paper towel that you can unload the paint from see because you don't want to have too much paint and so what I do is off camera I have a paper towel right here and I just simply take it and I unload it like so okay you test your brush to see if it's going to hold the paint by just basically grazing it on the thumb of your of your uh, painting hand okay and that's what I'm doing right here okay so that kind of gives you a little bit of a look, all right? So we're going to start the shadowing process right now. Let me get him in here and I'll get zeroed in on him. Okay. Unload the brush and start where the shadows would be. It'll be underneath the chin and the neck. Inside the eye. Okay, so now what you see here is where we've applied the first shadows, okay, inside the eyes, okay, on the sides of the nose, okay, going right down the crease of the of where your nose comes down by your lips, okay, underneath the chin, okay, if I get it right here, underneath the chin, right there, and underneath the neck where the shadow is going to be. Okay, also got a spot into the ear over here and a spot in what it shows at the ear over here. So that's where your shadows are going to show up. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is now start to highlight the different parts with a lighter tone of light skin. Okay. And that's going to be across the forehead that's exposed. It's going to be the bridge of the nose. Okay. That's going to be the chin. That's going to be right here. Okay, and I'll come back and show what that looks like here as soon as I get done with that. It's extremely difficult to paint. Okay, when you're looking into uh, from the standpoint of a camera. So what I'm going to try to do is go ahead after each step's done, I'll go ahead and give you a quick video look and see how this turns out. Okay, so next up is the light highlights. First set of highlights. Okay, for the first set of highlights, what you did was you took your light skin tone, and you went down the bridge of the nose, okay, across the top of the forehead that's exposed by the helmet, okay, your high cheekbones, okay, obviously on both sides you make it symmetry as much as you can. The bridge of the nose is very important, okay, your chin, all right, that you see here, and then a line of your jaw. Once again, underneath that is the shadow that's going to be there, okay. So that's what that looks like after the first set of highlights, all right. Now, before we get too farther on, I'm going to go ahead and do the eyes. And for the eyes, I use a very, very small brush. Okay, the it would be the the triple the triple zero for the Zem brushes. Okay, and to do that, we need a very steady hand with the 
the, the deck tan for the eyes. Okay, I'll go ahead and line the eyes with the red shadow, okay, that you'll have back there. And that way you'll get the eye definition, then you can work out from there, okay? So we'll go ahead and put the eyes in, and then you can see what the eyes look like after that gets done. Okay, now this is the picture uh, after you got done putting the whites of the eyes in with your Vallejo deck tan, okay? You took the red shadow, okay, of the Mr. Paint acrylics, and you went in and went underneath the eye to help form the eye bag. You went on top of the eye, okay? And then what you wind up doing is you take a Vallejo black with the, the three triple zero um, brush from Zem, and then you put in the pupil. Now, a friend of mine, Roger Sams, learned a long time ago that so you don't have a problem with the symmetry of the eyes, you offset the eyes. So what I've done is I've made this GI uh, have his pupil on one side and looking over so he looks like he's looking off to the side. That'll help a little bit so you don't get a goofy eye appearance. Okay, so that's what you have right there. Now what I'm going to do next and the next steps is I'm going to go ahead and close the eyes up a little bit using uh, pink flesh tones so it kind of closes up the closes up the eye bag and beginning to now start to form in with very very thin colors okay you start to kind of add a little bit of depth in with the different shadings so uh, i'll go ahead and get this and i'll show you the next video picture and the next still after we kind of close up his eyes okay now this is after I've taken the pink, uh, the pink flesh tones, and began closing in the eyes. Okay, you basically want to still leave a line of the brown shadow. Okay, so you see the line of the eyes, but then you start closing it in a little bit, and so you get a little bit more of a pink shading underneath the eye and above the eye. Okay, and for me that turned out pretty good for his eyes. You need to have an extremely steady hand when you're doing this work. And it always helps to have the finest brushes that you can get your hands on. And once again, like I said before, when I'm using these these new Zem these new Zem brushes, all right, uh, they're really solid. I'm really kind of enjoying the work they have. They have a very fine point to them. And remember, as you always unload your brush, okay, you need to have just a little bit of that very thin paint out, so it's very controllable as you begin working. Okay. Now, next, I'm going to go ahead and begin the, the final highlights, okay, and begin adding a little bit of shading, okay, and different tones to, uh, to the figure so he has a little bit more depth, all right? Okay, now kind of getting to the home stretch with our figure here, okay, I went back and you add another set of highlights with the light skin. Okay, and you just touch up a few places where the cheekbones, the bridge of the nose, okay, um, you go ahead and touch up a little bit at the, the tip of the chin, okay, the chin line, okay, you notice I still have my dark shadow there for the shadow of the underneath the cheek, okay, and uh, once again, the tip of the nose and the bridge or the, the little bit of the forehead that's exposed without the helmet, okay, now the next step in this is going to be the blending Okay, and basically they call it glazing, is when you're going to take and start uh, different tones of your flesh, and that'll be the pale skin, okay, that'll be the pink flesh tone, okay, we'll start to go over the, the, the face to kind of take all of these and blend them all together, okay, and that's what it's going to look like. So we'll be right back after I get that portion of this done. Okay, this is our completed face using Mr. Paint Acrylics. Okay, uh, my little step-by-step, -step, I try to do um, the best I could showing a little bit of video and still pictures of how he kind of turned out. I'm going to add a five o'clock shadow to him here in just a little bit. But what I did after you had the shadows uh, placed on his cheekbones, okay, and the different things uh, to the different depths, that you need to have 
Okay, you really need to make sure your paints are thinned, whether you're using whatever kind of acrylics you're using with the flesh tones. You want to make sure they're they're thinned as much as possible, okay, to be able to be able to put layers down on your figures. Okay. And what I did was I used the pink uh, the pink flesh tone and went back and forth over to create a little bit of depth with his cheekbone and where the shadow was. Okay. To finish things off, I took uh, the brown shadow and went and created a crease in his in his lips right in here and then I went back to the very beginning to the brown shadow and flesh tone mix and painted up his lower lip to make that stand out just a little bit okay I'm going to add a five o'clock shadow to him and I'll show you that uh, still picture uh, with the five o'clock shadow like any respectable late war GI would have as he closes in on Berlin so uh, that's it. This is my first step-by-step -step tutorial. Hey, okay, hopefully you guys will find it useful and you can use any paints. I just choose my, my brand that I like for flesh tones is Mr. Paint Acrylics. Okay. But you can use, um, Life Color, Vallejo. Okay. Um, you know, Ammo of Make, whatever. Okay. But you just need to find and pick which one works for you and just follow a step-by-step -step pattern and hopefully what I've done here is kind of shown you how the different tones can work. Okay, so stay tuned for the different stills. And if you like what you see, please make sure you leave a comment. And if you really like what you see, please subscribe. All right. Thank you very much. And until next time from 35th Scale Figures in Review.